You're listening to Oilers Nation Radio, presented by The Nation Network. Subscribe for free on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Thank you very much, Lisa. Here we are in Oilers Nation Radio, episode 52. To my left is producer Tyler. To my right is Rick. Across the table is The Nation Dan, as well as Nick Lausgood, who will be starting at The Nation to replace Cam in a couple of weeks. We didn't give him a mic. No, we didn't give him a mic. He's just going to sit here and stare at us, and we're going to stare right back at him. It's great. Initiation. Of course. You don't get a mic right away. Yeah, the kind of the initiation was the golf tournament. He was along with Rick and I. On the back of the cart. For some adventures last Thursday, we are going to talk about the golf tournament a little bit later. But first, we are going to start with a shout out to our friends at Sherwood Ford, the Giant. Why? Because they've got wonderful vehicles. Why? Because they've got excellent service. Why? Because they've got excellent people working out there in Sherwood Park, Alberta. And they were at, they were a whole sponsor at the Nation Open last week, trying to give away the Oilers Nation truck. Unfortunately, nobody won it, Dan. We got within a few feet. I'm told there was a couple of guys within two, three feet of the hole. Right off the bat. Eh? I went into the sand. Nice. Yep. You didn't mulligan on that one? No, I didn't buy mulligans. I didn't, I didn't see the thing. <sighs> I inspired... Tyler was one of like the four people that didn't buy a, a super ticket, by the way. Well, because... <laughs> it, so it was the super ticket, and I was like, no, oh, no. No, don't pretend, because I, I walked up to you, and you said, I don't need those mulligans. Jason, he was basically like, I do not want to support the Jason Greger Foundation. Those kids have nice enough suits as it is. That's right. Um, no, but I saw the super <laughs> ticket and I was like, okay, and this gets you what? And they were like, oh, entries into the draws. And I was like, no, I work here. That's a bad look if I win the draws. So I didn't. And then I later found out they were mulligans. If you would have watched, Dan watched me for a whole. I did. I needed quadruple the mulligans. Giving, I was fucking awful. I'm giving myself credit for your recovery of your round after that. Really? I'm giving it credit to the tequila ladies. Okay. Shout out enough. to the tequila ladies. We're going to do a full Oilers Nation open breakdown a little bit later. Again. I want to shout out our friends at Sherwood Ford. Follow them on Twitter at Sherwood Ford and on Instagram at Sherwood Ford underscore the giant. They're good people. Go check them out. Boys, I want to start today's episode with the news du jour, which is Riley Sheehan coming to town on a one-year deal worth $900,000. In 2018-19, he played 82 games split between the Pens and the Florida Panthers and got nine goals, 10 assists for 19 points he had 52 plus percentage in the face-off circle a 46.4 percent Corsi if that is your thing he also had a horrible zone starts of like 30 something so basically he was hmm. stapled to the defensive zone Tyler you've been talking about Riley Sheehan all yep. summer in your rumors you've been talking about him as a potential third line center all summer mm -hmm. tell me about this signing I like it um, obviously the connection with Ken Holland is there um, he's a guy who has experience being a third line center, but there were also a couple of moments and I want to go back and double check this. I didn't have time to do it before the podcast, but I remember a few moments where they were giving him a couple of looks on the wing in Pittsburgh. And there's a part of me that goes, you know what? If Cooper Marodi's here, if, you know, I don't know, Colby Cave, Gaetan Haas, whoever fills in those center spots, maybe this is a guy in Riley Shan who it's like, Hey, he might be our third line center or if things break, right? Maybe he's a winger in our middle six, something like that. Like he has skill. He was drafted as a skill guy. Um, but really I think it's a move where his floor is very high, if you know what I mean, right? Like his floor is close to his ceiling. Whereas I don't think this is a guy who's going to score you 20 goals this season at any point, but I don't think this is a guy who's going to be down in Bakersfield at any, any point. I think it's like a, you know, he'll get you your nine to 13 goals. He'll play good, solid third line center responsible in the D zone, kill penalties. Maybe he gets on the second power play unit. Maybe he doesn't, but the Mac, the best he can do and the worst he can do, I think are very close together. So I think it's a safe bet. I explained that weird, but whatever. What scares me about that is that that's kind of what we thought about Tobias Reader. I'm not saying he is Tobias Reader. Yeah, well, but that's PTO candidate, Tobias Reader to you. Yeah, fair enough. I just, I think Bag Milk, the one thing that you kind of hit on there and it, it worries me a little bit is that we're going to be counting on him probably to be in that defensive role position with the third line center as is. Because Nuge and uh, Nuge and Connor will probably take most of our offensive zone face off, so that's a little worrisome. But I mean, it was basically Shahan or uh, Boyle as our two real options. And to come this into morning, Jason Greger wrote this morning at OilersNation.com that Brian Boyle is not an option. Um, the Oilers were out on Brian Boyle if they they didn't have the space to overpay him, which it would have taken to get him to Edmonton. So it wasn't really an option. Yeah. Uh, as we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, George George is Larock. We talked about Derek Broussard coming to town. Obviously, that didn't happen. So Riley Sheehan kind of was the next in line. It seemed like 
especially if you can't get a guy like Boyle, right, Rick? Yeah, they committed to this uh, early in the summer. They decided to go for a couple of these um, one-year contracts, you know, exactly what you guys wanted to see. I still would prefer that we lose two or three of them and turn them into one guy worth $3 million, a little more proven. But uh, we are where we are, so, you know, this is a, a good addition. Um, like Tyler said there, uh, he doesn't think the, f- the floor is going to be that low. So that's kind of what killed us last year. A lot of guys who had really, really, really bad years. So if he's able to keep one of those holes, he's able to plug one of those holes, that's gonna, only going to help the team. I saw a tweet this morning. I wanted to see what you guys thought of it. It was actually just 13 minutes ago. Uh, so it looks like Ken Holland is using the Vegas Golden Knights year one strategy. And with McDavid and Dreisaitl on the team, it might just work. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I think there's an element of that that does make sense. Like the thing is, the difference is, I should say, Vegas got guys with offensive potential, right? They got guys yeah. who were maybe just it being under. Show. They're, yeah, like guys who were maybe being underutilized in their current spots and needed fresh looks. The Oilers have guys who I, I don't think have the upside of a Jonathan Marshall, so a William Carlson. No. But even at the same Neil time, at that point, yeah, even oh yeah, Neil was still ripping twenty home every year, right? But this um, is, but I guess I would say to that is that this is a, uh, it's it's more of a gamble or it's more of a play for our bottom six, which is which is I think a good thing. Yeah, well, that's exactly what killed us last year is that secondary scoring was monumentally horrible. Yeah, the well, bottom six is all brand new, right? Like yeah. it's Jujar. Less, yeah. When you compare it to the start of last season, it's Jujar. Who else is still kicking? Sam Gagne. But he was mid season. No, he was. Yeah, that's yeah, true. He was a Strom last year. Right, like yeah, who, no, I can't think it's of, a uh, brand new bottom Colby six. Cave, but he came in. Oh, no, Colby Cave came in. Ryan Strom would be a yeah. nice third line center, would it? Oh, fuck me. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. But it kind of goes in line with I wrote something earlier in the summer when Ken Holland was first hired as GM, and I spoke to Nick Sagan, who was editing Wings Nation at the time, and kind of asked him about his how it works with Ken Holland, and he said this is what he does. He will overload a position of weakness that he sees, in this case, the bottom six, and let it shake out in training camp. And what's going to be interesting to me is seeing how many of these new guys kind of hit the waiver wire. You've got guys like Cave, Yurko, Haas, Archibald, all in that mix for not so many jobs. Now you, you've got Granlin in there. Now you've got, um, you know, Sheehan just signed today. How many guys, new guys or even old guys, do you think is going to hit the waiver wire come training camp or the end of the preseason. Well, three, right? I think that's kind of our magic number to get down. And then someone like Ryan McLeod, Tyler Benson, Cooper Marodi could up that a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, you're looking at probably three or four guys just from that forward core having to hit the waiver wire. I'm not a big Thomas Yurko believer. I don't think there's a ton of Whoa. upside there with that guy. Whoa, stop hating on Yurko. Um, <laughs> like even someone like Gaetan Haas, now that Shahan is here. Gaetan if, Haas. Um, if he's strictly a center it'll be a little bit tough for him to crack this roster, I think, with the addition of Shehan now. So I, I think Haas is an interesting guy who I think's on the outside looking in as we roll into camp. Who's your fourth center then? Colby Cave. Because right. yeah. I think Brodziak is... You yeah, know, I agree with yeah. you, Brodziak. So uh, you think Colby Cave is that much further ahead than, say, Gaetan Haas? Or that he's that much better that Gaetan Haas is going to be a... A Colby Callen's going to be a, a, a mountain he has to climb in order to get that fourth spot? I wouldn't say a mountain, but a small hill. Like, there is still some climbing involved here. Um, I just think Cave a has a... slight upgrade. Cave has a leg up because the Oilers know him a little bit, and he has NHL experience. No one knows if Gaetan Haas can even be an NHL player. If Colby Cave's in the lineup on night one, you know what you're kind of getting. He's going to skate hard. He's going to lay some checks. He's going to play on your penalty kill, and there you go. So there's a pretty good chance that... One or one of those two guys is like your thirteenth and fourteenth forward, then, right? Yeah, there's another option there too. Like maybe Haas is just your thirteenth, fourteenth forward, but yeah, because then he he, yeah. he can it's between him and Cave, yeah. and to be fair, whoever uh, Sheehan at, at third uh, to battle for those those two center spots. But out out of the centers, I don't think you almost need to keep one around as an extra forward. Like a lot of times, I sit there and go, "You need someone as your extra forward who can play center." because that's a tough position to fill. But when you look at the fact that Gagne, Granlund, Kara, those guys can play center in a pinch if you need them for a week. Yeah. So in, in that sense, I do think it, it'll be tough for Haas. Like, if it comes down to Haas and Archibald as your last spot, you might give it to Archibald, right? But doesn't this move now make Gagne not a roster player? Gagne is a roster player. Oh, he's if, definitely on the- if there were plans for Gagne to not be a roster player, they would have bought his ass out. Yeah, yeah I suppose. 
I like him as a ro- I like him on the roster. Me too. I like him. I just don't like him at three mil, but I like him here. No, and that's. That's I think Gagne is probably going to be a third line kind of guy that gets a healthy dose of power play too. And that's probably. absolutely what he should be. Yeah. I agree. Which is what landed him the contract that he's got right now in the first place. Right. Yep. Yeah. Another thing that happened this week is also the start of rookie camp. The boys are back in town, including my favorite dad, Evan Bouchard. Dusty talked about it a little bit today on inside the nation, which is goes up twice a week on Facebook live. Join that whenever he goes. My question for you guys, and we've talked about it a little bit, is now we are very much loading up the bottom six with options. New guys from Europe, cast-offs from other teams, UFAs. Riley Sheen's now in the mix, probably for a third or fourth line center, depending on how things shake out. Is there room for some of these rookies to crack the lineup? Yes. No. I say no. Oh, oh what percent there is. I just think that, I think that having Ken Holland in the organization... There's already there's already a glass ceiling in the sense that it's tough for a rookie We're to break in. We're not Detroit. We can't even compare ourselves to Detroit. They have to, to, have, to, have, to, they have, to have a breakout year like the Yamamoto's. Oh, so you mean like Benson's year last year? I'm talking about the preseason because that's when that's when the that's when these guys get their final evaluation. Like Ty Ratty. Yeah, Ty Ratty. Preseason champion. Yeah. Last and I year. think I think that we added another glass ceiling with Ken Holland. And he he that's why he has all these scratch tickets now. That's why he signed the litany of people. And that's why I would say to bag milks over under, I would say under 3.5. Which guy there, which guy in the lineup do you think is going to be better than Benson in the top six role? Chase him. Not one of the guys. He's they it's play also different sides. They're not different, different positions. It's not, they're not uh, comparable. So uh, what are you thinking, Rick? Are you thinking that Benson would be with Nuge and Neil then? I think, yeah, I think ben, you put Benson on a line on that second line. But is um, it Neil the, the right winger there? Yeah. You can flip them, I think. I want Neil on the right side when it comes to that shot. We did this a long time ago with Eric Cole and screwed that up. <laughs> to me, uh, James Neil on the right side, we get that shot off the way he does. Have Nuge passing it to him. Especially with and a left-handed f- center, man. And to be fair, Benson's a great playmaker as well. I just don't I just don't see it myself just because of the the amount of the full amount of people that Holland has put in front of them. Yeah, but like to me, just to, to counter you, Dan, I think that the bulk of those guys are easily replaceable. Easily. I don't disagree. Yeah. However, I think that there's a value in having Benson continue his his track that he's that he's had for a year in the AHL, just continue on growing from there. And like Dusty said, he's the first call up you make this year. So but I don't why, think he makes the roster. Call up, why not start him? I don't well, think he needs to make your roster. I, I think there's not a better offensive player there's, in there. There's enough magic beans there that you can try those guys out. Let Benson continue on the top line in Bakersfield, and then you make the call. If you if you decide that all your scratch tickets are duds, then you make. So that he's call. your last call out of all these guys. You'd rather put all of them in a spot. I would rather him. Benson. I would rather him starting consistently in Bakersfield. He's going to be consistent He's instead of instead line. of trying to have him slot in and around the lineup like we've done in the past. No, no, I have him specifically in the top six, surrounded by two older, actual top six. I would forwards. rather find out what we have in a Grandland, in a in a Haas. Well, Grandland could be gone next in year. In a Nygaard, I know these but guys would, are not even worth. I'd it. be well, rather Benson's the sure. guy you want to know about. I'd be. I'd rather. I'd rather have him in the AHL. Find out exactly what we have in him still. Because he had his breakout year, I don't disagree, but I think that he, I think he gets some consistent time in the AHL. You figure out what you have in the Magic Beans. If you don't have it, you bring him up. To me, I, I wish that the Oilers had the depth to make him stay in the AHL for another year. I just don't think they do. I think that he could, I could easily see a situation where Tyler Benson beats out Joaquin Nygaard for a spot on the left side. That's fair. I just don't think that they went to. I don't think that they go to that well if they thought that he was a. I just think we're arguing about something that's going to be entirely results driven. Like if Tyler Benson comes in and looks meh or of looks course. like decent, of course. then he's going down. If Tyler Benson comes in, blows the doors off, then they're not going to just send him down for the sake of development. If he's their second best left winger, yeah. he's on the team opening night. It's Cooper Marodi too. If he comes in and looks meh, decent, they're sending him down. If he comes in and blows the doors off, he's their third line center on night one, right? So I, I think, think they push Ben. I think they give Benson a little more leeway than they would a Marodi too. Because I think they want someone right there to, to, to plug that spot. And yeah. I think he has the best opportunity of all of them. I just wish Marodi had just like a little bit more wheels, you know what I mean? Because his yeah, hands can, and brain are there. If he could move his boots a bit, if he could skate as good as he could grow facial hair, we'd really be cooking with something. Fuck, there's some boys down there that got some great beards. Joe Gambardella. Just Gambardella. I'm getting a running start right now. Evan Poli, who's now with you the You can Blues. grow a great beard too. I need some time though. 
I yeah, feel but I think like about a few Gambard- years ago, you had a hell of a beard. Gambardella's comes out of nowhere. Oh, man. Gambardella just clenches up for a second yeah. and pushes it out like yeah. a thick and like a lush. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, just like the service you get from our friends at Sherwood Ford the Giant out in Sherwood Park, Alberta. Dan, you live in Sherwood Park. I How do. great are the people at Sherwood Ford? I assume you just swing by there on weekdays and check them out. As a matter of fact, I've been doing a lot of visiting to Sherwood Ford. It seems like I'm there every day, every other day, because the Nation Truck, as we all know, is involved in a lot of their charity drives and, and events. So I end up being the uh, the shuttle service to get the Nation Truck from the Squire to the Sherwood Ford people. And man, are they just the absolute best people out there. There is somebody there to greet you with a smile, help you out wherever you need to go. They see me now and they just walk away because they're tired of seeing me. <laughs> but they uh, they would treat everybody like royalty and uh, they will get you into a new vehicle lickety split. I was talking to Dave from Sherwood Ford who is in charge of marketing for them out of the golf tournament. And we were just talking about outside of the Frank versus Gus picks that are going to be happening again this year, some other stuff that we can do with them. And we're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun in some vehicles that none of us have any right driving, but we're going to do it anyway. And it's all thanks to our friends at Sherwood Ford. Go ahead and follow them on Twitter at Sherwood Ford and on Instagram at Sherwood Ford underscore the giant. Yeah, uh, we were talking a little bit about James Neal here playing on the right side or the left side. Doesn't matter who cares. Probably the right side. Anyway, I want to bring up Milan Lucic, who yesterday pissed off pretty much every single Oilers fan with a clip that came out where he was talking about the age of leadership in Calgary and how that defers to what is going on in Edmonton. Um, I have the full clip here. If you will just bear with me, I'll read it to you. And my question for all of you guys... We got the out? audio and I could have played it on the roadcaster. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. I'm, I'm still getting used to this roadcaster oh, and like all the things about that the roadcaster. Can we just but, play it off your phone like we did last week? Well, but is being there able, a, is I there was just going to say the it? trick is to try and find the full quote which Bagwell yeah. has. Yeah, I got the they, full quote. Because we're even guilty of it here at ON because I just shared. I'm not guilty of anything. I yeah. shared Tim and Sid's clip that they did where they just took a Tim very small sn- snippet of well, it. Well, not only that, not only did they take a small snippet of it, but they also, the caption that they put was also very trolly, which yeah. I respect. Yeah. I get it. You they need them page views, man. Go. You need them views. I get yeah. it. They get the so Lucic, when asked about going to Calgary, he said, uh, talking about leadership, obviously some more veterans and you know, your captain and your leader is in his thirties and he's an older guy. I mean, aren't you in your thirties and an older guy and probably was supposed to lead. Anyway, I had a lot of experience with that with Zidane Chara in Boston and that obvi- that seemed to obviously work out really, really well. Like I said, there's just older veteran guys on the team. Not just that. I think the whole team learned a lot from their season last year, having a great, great regular season, then underachieving a little bit in the postseason. A little bit. I don't know about that. Let's, that's where you learn. You learn through experience and stuff like that. And that's where I think this team is excited about getting going here starting next week. So to be fair to Milan Lucci, she did not do a direct comparison between Connor McDavid and Mark Giordano. However, it is a weird look because this is the second time in the summer he's brought up having an older captain. Obviously, we know Connor is not an old man. He's not? Well, compared to you, you're just a young whippersnapper, you know? <laughs> but Milan Lucic forgot about Evan Bouchard. I love so that post. I just like, think that... It's a weird comment to make just going back to the well of having an older captain because he was brought in to be a leader on the Edmonton Oilers as a veteran player. Uh, Dusty Nielsen tweeted last night that he had heard from a source that Milan Lucic is one of the worst teammates that this specific person has ever had and that there was a very dysfunctional dressing room, which annoyed a lot of people because Oilers media does have a tendency to shit on guys as they leave. But in terms of what Dusty heard, I heard the same thing. Me too. So there, and the timeline of when they heard it is a lot more recent than people probably think. I just don't get, I don't get, sorry to ba- to derail bag milk, but I, I just don't get the whole, this, this sentiment that people have created where it's, where it's Oilers, uh, writers and, and people in the locker room, just sewer guys on the way out. I Lucic, mean, they do though, but, like, Lucic, a lot. but it's, but it like for me with Lucic, in this in this specific scenario, there's a guy that has been much maligned recently, and fairly so. He he was terrible, getting paid six million dollars to do nothing for this team. He wasn't leading off the ice, as he's kind of admitted now. He wasn't leading on the ice, so he wasn't doing anything. Well, and, and he also talked about last summer that he needed to have a better attitude in the dressing room. Yeah, um, and he said that himself in his his post year interviews a year ago. So. It's I don't know. Like it, it's just not out of anywhere. You know, it's not out of nowhere that this is that this is happening. Media people don't make this shit up, man. Well, it's just yeah. You do. I mean, 
Well, Tyler makes it all up. Legitimate media people don't make this <laughs> shit up, man. Tim and Sid did. I don't think that even in that little clip, he didn't say anything about Connor. He just said he he just somehow referred to the fact he'd rather have a, an older uh, an older captain, which makes no sense to me. I don't know if the guy needs a babysitter, someone to tie his skates. I don't really know what the difference is. What I just didn't understand. But is- I don't think anybody went. Everyone who like shit their pants yesterday over this thing. I really don't get it. Like what the I only thing he implied was that Connor's not old. I always like making, I always like when people imply that I'm mad or suggest that I'm mad when I make jokes about things. Yeah. I was like, listen, man, the, well, all I said is an older captain is not going to make Milan Lucic be able to handle the puck any better than he can. No, wouldn't well, an older captain actually been harder on him? Probably. You would think so. But maybe like, he I, I can't see Chara sitting back going, letting him be an asshole in the dressing room. I can't see Chara allowing him to skate around on the, well, pretend to skate around on the ice and really not do anything. An uh, older captain, you think, would have shit on him harder. My thing, though, with like Bag Milk mentioned is that this is the second time now this summer that he's kicked up that hornet's nest with These just questions a comment. always come up. And but it's, with, just a, with, this, with just the comment about Giordano. We so, and the over, I think people so over, oh, absolutely over read into things. It's like Pooley RV out wherever where he's doing his things and he says one thing and it gets pulled 19 different ways. <laughs> But I think it's, it's August to September. We're getting bored. We're just we're over over analyzing things right now. My favorite was uh, Willis at the Athletic uh, today. had it, had his take on the Lucic thing, where he's basically like, maybe just Lu- maybe Milan just doesn't know how to answer questions. Maybe that's just it. And I thought that was hilarious because it's probably true. That's Anybody? probably closer to the truth than anything else. Probably. I like it. He, Rashad said it today as well on the radio. Luch is giving what he thinks is a good answer to this. I don't think we, <laughs> you, we all know him and Connor were like friends. Sure. Like him and Connor hung out together. Yep. This, that was not where the divide was with Luch in the room. It was other people. Well, um, like he's not going out here being like, oh, well, fucking McDavid's a joke. One of the things though, that I think with the internet outrage now is that it's what you don't say that people get outraged about. So when somebody says that he had issues in the locker room, they assume that literally everybody in the locker room and him had an See, issue. I think, yeah, and I agree with you. It's just, that's the way things are oh, of course on Twitter. Is. And of they're over implying, they're over reading things. Absolutely. And I see it so many times when this side of an argument and that side of the argument, they said the exact same thing. It's honestly, it's so fucking frustrating to sit back and read. I don't know how you guys do this for but, the regular, like sitting there and you guys go through your comment sections and shit. Dude, but, I'd get like three comments in. I'd, Smash my computer. <laughs> to come back to what Bag Milk said. I won't said, talk to anyone for a fucking week. We try to have a laugh about it. Like we literally, we had a conversation about our caption because we were talking about Tim and Sid's being quite quite the, uh, the trolley masterpiece. And we just let people do with it what they want. And, and we had some fun with it. I made a joke about, well, Giordano's older, so he obviously knows how to make a time machine. Like that's, you know, I, like I'm not upset that Lucic doesn't, or thinks that Giordano is going to be a better captain for him. So be it. He's not an oiler anymore. I don't care. I yeah, don't I just think I, th- I take it so much further than as yeah. and Puglia. Absolutely everything. If you don't like somebody, if they say the sky is blue, you tear them apart. <laughs> as they should. said, the other thing is you tear like it's absolutely ridiculous. I, is it is blue. interesting though, just as a note on this, how the approach is so different between what James Neal is saying publicly and what Milan Lucic is saying publicly. James Neal did his first kind of informal skates the other day and spoke to the media at length about 10 minutes. The Oilers have that on their Twitter if you want to go check that out. But he basically said, listen, last year was, you know, he owned a lot. He owned his struggles a lot more than maybe saying what he probably wanted to say. And I respected that. I think that he's coming into it with a better attitude. He's what, five, six years older. So he's a little bit smarter. Should be anyway. He's not that much older. How old is the real deal? I thought he was oh, 32. Oh, no, that's Smith who's 37. My yeah. <laughs> you thought, oh, oh, man, you thought. The real deal, James Neal turns 33 years old. And so maybe. Tem- or he turned 32 in September 3rd. Happy birthday, James yeah. Neal. Oh, happy birthday. Maybe James Neal's the type of veteran leader that Milan wanted to play with. Maybe. Ooh. Maybe. See, and, I, like, and I've heard things about Neil where he's he's not a great locker room guy, but you, you look past it because he's scoring you 20 goals a year. I think he's yeah. like a, I think he's like a, I, th- I think I've quote the, unquote jock. And so if you're, you're into yeah. that, you're cool. But if you're like the, that's not necessarily you, then you hate it. But the, that's the thing. That's the thing with, with every guy that goes out of the, out of the locker room. There's a reason he's gone. And yes, the media is going to report about it. I don't think that that's a bad thing. That if, if Neil has a terrible year this year and he's a terrible guy in the locker room and we buy him out, there is going to be an article written about how he was mean to, you know, to Connor one night. He may actually get a freebie because he is just the 
piece that got Luch out of here and makes things a little bit easier. Yeah, maybe. Listen, if he scores 20 goals, nobody's going to give a shit what James Neal's attitude is. Nope. Yep. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, exactly. Yeah. I'm done with having the choir boy team. Like everybody wants everyone to be the nicest kids in the world. Mm. I want to fucking win. Yeah. I don't care what you do. You don't break no fucking Raiders. laws. Let's go and fucking win. I don't care if you don't want to sign autographs after a game. I don't care if you don't want to talk to somebody in the fucking bar. Let's go fucking win. Let's I'd like to see Connor stiff arm some kids when they ask for autograph. Hell I want to yeah. see him go out during Ford small stars and just torment them. Oh yeah. Just dummying those kids. I want yeah. a barbed wire fence around Roger's place. I want to rough this place up. Hey, I'm down. I think it's a great soft. idea. I think it's We're getting a great way idea. too soft. Let's turn this place into the black hole. I'm firing Hunter the Lynx, and the guy who bangs the dr- the plastic drums outside is coming in to be the new mascot. Oh, that, I love yeah, Pale I Guy. It. Yes. And then the push-up guy from White Ave, too. He's in. Yeah. Can't forget push-up guy. On Twitter this week, I put my official James Neal goal prediction out. And? I am saying 22 goals. That is what I'm saying for James Neal. James Neal's feeling 22. That's what I'm saying. What do you say? Me? Yeah, you. Oh, put me on the spot. I'm not not too big into predictions. What are you uh, doing right now? Like he didn't ask for a disclaimer. He asked for a prediction. Come on now, go. Twenty three. Yeah, what are we doing prices right rules here. This is I bullshit. Love it. Rick. I'm, well, I I did tweet out. I think said I said twenty two to twenty five. But the way you guys are going here, I'm going north of twenty five. I'm going to go to twenty seven. Holy Dinah, Dan. I want to be wrong. I'm happy to be wrong. I yeah, say seventeen. You went low. Yep. I say 17, and that's fine by me. And you, going but to, you, did, you also said Luch was going to get 11. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally on board with Luch getting 11. <laughs> I don't care. Get get enough. Dude so hasn't got Calgary 11 in two years out. combined. That's fine. that's fine. Playing with Connor McDavid. I think he'll. Hey I man, think they're going to give Jankowski's him Mark Jankowski's going to turn that around, though. There you go. Mark Jankowski is the Luchich whisper. Nick, oh, he's stuck with good making his ON radio debut with a James Neal prediction. Cut the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say 20 on the dot. 20 on the dot. There you go. And now we should not give him back a mic until Neil scores his 20th. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's fair. <laughs> there so you go. We kinda, we're kind of all in the same ballpark. Dan is with the low at 17. I'm at 22. Rick's going high at 27. My Woo! glass is half full. Absolutely. Uh, like I said, I'm, over I running. hope I'm wrong. I want to be wrong. I'm going to make a bet with Dean Millard over it. I'm going to, I mean, and I want to lose. I'm stoked on that. But You're very bad at competitions. Yep. You got to pick so yep, you want to win. Well, hey, listen here, Mr. Luchich Gold Draft guy. You want to win. <laughs> How many goals in the Luchich Gold Draft did you have? Because you took all of his first December games. Yeah, you felt good about it. It didn't matter Christmas. when I took them. <laughs> <laughs> you were looking coom? back hindsight. It didn't matter when I took them. There was two games over there where you got beat. Yep. Basically, anybody who wasn't Cam is a loser in that yep. one. Anyway, what are you going to do? So we've got some nail predictions on the board. I like it. I like it. I feel confident with 22, though. I feel like I'm going to win, and all of you are going to bow to me when he gets his 20. You're one goal. on the nose, too. Like, anything ab- That's right. above 27, I feel like I can put my feet up on the desk and smile. If he gets above 27, I will happily allow you to put your feet up on this desk. That's not my desk. Well, we are drinking some of these bottles back here. Big Absolutely. Milk, we, got had, some, we got some booze back here to drink. Go ahead. You had bounced around an idea up in the office. I don't know if you want it on the podcast or not, but you had thought maybe doing a go- Milan Lucic goal draft. The yeah, I was, I was trying to. Th- I was trying to think of how we could do a Lucic goal draft again. I don't want to pay attention to the Flames. That's I was going to say that's like a Lame. Calgary thing. Looking at us, so we got to. Uh, but it would be funny. Throw down do you think it's going to be one of those things now? Because Lucic is there, uh, Brandon Davidson's there, Cam Talbot is there. They just brought in Tobias Reader on a PTO. Do you Brandon think Davidson. Gonna- he said oh, you did. Sorry. Do Brandon think- Davidson. Don't forget Brandon Davidson. <laughs> Sebastian uh, did you forget Brandon Young. Davidson? Brandon Davidson. Uh, do you think it's going to be one of those things where those guys come into Edmonton and they torch us like Talbot gets a fucking shout out? Toby scores. I was just going to say, if Tobias Reader signs. <laughs> Toby sure. scores five goals next year and they're all against the Oilers. I said Tobias no, Reader. That is over. That whole the black cloud that is dead. It is gone. It is in the wind. Tobias Reader hope. scores. 13 goals in his first half of the season, and then he disappears into the ethos. All for Bob Nicholson. Maybe. Wherever he signs. I don't know. No I, I, I made a meme yesterday about Calgary loving to sign Oilers cast-offs, and boy, did that piss Flames fans off. They were in my mentions all day, DMing me on Instagram and Twitter. Oh, Chase on and Neil and Smith. I was like, hey, yeah, that, it's 100% true, but Calgary picked up all four of these dudes in a matter of two months. And they were all guys that were like, if you had to list from like one to five players, Oilers fans had the most beef with last year. It's like <laughs> those guys. It's 
literally the problems. And also, and we're not Davidson. Also, we're not picking up Flames castoffs. We're picking up Washington Capital castoff and Chase on. We're picking up picking up a. Where the hell was Russell when we got him? Uh, he was coming off a brief stint in Dallas. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Dallas. Is his career went Columbus, St. Louis, Calgary, Dallas here? Mm. We hosed Calgary. To get James Neal, I can't. Believe, I still can't believe James Neal's here. Yeah, I saw him in an Oilers practice jersey the other day. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. But you know what does make sense, Nick? You don't have a mic, so you can't answer. Ha. Ah. Ordering food from SkipTheDishes.ca. He just said that. He said that. Oh, you couldn't hear it. He did. He oh, you couldn't hear. He's off mic. He tried. Oh, nice try, Nick. Maybe <laughs> he doesn't get to reward mic. yourself. <laughs> he doesn't get his mic back until you the go to SkipTheDishes.ca and order yourself a nice little donair, maybe some kind of oodle noodle or some kind of maybe a soup. Feels like a nice soup day outside. Whatever fancy, Nick. Skip the dishes.ca. Why? Because I assume you can't cook. You spend too much time grooming that beard of yours. One thing that Nick did do is he took a sweet tumble off a golf cart last week. And it was hilarious. Rick and I both laughed and laughed. Much like you would laugh. <laughs> what? <laughs> we were in tears. I don't know who was laughing. We were. Oh, I thought we almost died at that point. Yeah, we we're gonna get into the whole Nick falling off the there golf cart. There was no story. laughing at that point. I was holding on for dear life. I was laughing because I knew exactly it was my fault. The whole thing was my fault. Yeah, let the legally blind girl drive the cart. <laughs> hey, it was, she said it was her dream. There's five of us on a cart. <laughs> Our accountant. Skip the dishes. Ca. You can't cook, but you need to eat, and they want to help. Go to skipthedishes.ca, click the link through othersnation.com, or just go there directly. Sign up. They've always got promos. And you know you want it. Back to Connor McDavid for a second. Our friend Tom Gazzola was on the radio this week, and he talked about Connor McDavid's knee. Much has been spoken about whether or not he would miss some time in training camp preseason, maybe even some regular season games. And from our friend Tom, he was very handsome, even when he's wearing a Jason Bond senior jersey. He says, I know we've been worried collectively in terms of, is he going to play preseason games or not? How many preseason games is he going to play? Is he going to play? I heard from another player who's seen him on the ice every day, especially recently, that he looks like he's in game shape and that his speed and what he's able to do with his feet hasn't been hampered all that much, and that is a very good sign. The guy looks unreal. Um, the player Tom was talking to was one of the goaltending instructors instructors at the Gretzky Hockey School, and he was skating with McDavid back in Ontario. Oh. Does it make you feel better? Just hearing what Tom said? No, because I, I was never feeling bad. Yes, There's, you were. You cried. Well, that had nothing to do with McDavid. <laughs> um, no, like, this whole stuff came out, and everyone was <laughs> freaking out, and, oh, he's he done until December. They lied because of the season seats, blah, 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 blah. They're just being cautious, man. It's better. Is to that a thing that people thought they were lying? Because oh yes, tickets? I I've read gotten, that the other day. Was, my God, I've that's stupid. Come on, tell me about it. I've gotten five or six texts into my show, being like, "The fucking Oilers are such a fucking joke, man." <laughs> they lied to me, and they said McDivitt will be back in September, so they get some more season tickets, and he's actually going to be out till February. Until February. That's my that's my TSN twelve sixty text line voice. <laughs> that was okay. fantastic, by the way. The other day, I uh, Low Tide wanted to, me to look up something on KH on the KHL website. Yeah. So I jokingly was like, "Is that KHL dot CA?" <laughs> like obviously it's not fucking dot CA. <laughs> it's Russian. And someone texted in, <laughs> "Jesus fucking Christ, you're M Chuck. Why the fuck would it be dot CA? You're an idiot." <laughs> One of my favorite All things right. you do on your Instagram is when you post people shitting on you from the text line. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I love that. And then people will send me like supportive things being like, hey man, don't worry about that stuff. You're killing it. And I'll be like, I know. Like, okay. <laughs> Have you ever had anybody buy you a beer and, and give you a motivational speech? No. You know what? Just keep on the grind and make sure that you're working at it and just grabbing the day by the balls. Tyler, right? why do we fall off the horse so we can get back up again? Hey man. Shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land That's the, the only people who are going to even like, the only person who's going to remotely understand this is like Surveyor Brett. Everyone else is going to be like, what kind of joke is this? <laughs> and also people that have been on a date with you. Yeah. Yeah. In case you didn't know, Tyler. Is it just the one date? Dates so. ladies. He's well also played. good at intramural sports. Dan, do you feel <laughs> better about Tom Gazzola? Pumping Connor's tires a little bit. I wasn't worried about him either. I'm with Tyler that I wasn't really worried about it, but I like hearing Tommy G talk about how good he looks. Why not? Yeah, ever since we were in Calgary and we went on that roller coaster of emotions from 
It's broken and he's screaming down in the tunnel. Because just in case, fair listener, you do not know what Dan's talking about. We were all there for the last game of the season. For the Battle Calgary. of Alberta, yeah. Go ahead. And we were getting all of our information via Twitter, as you do nowadays. Um, yeah, ever, ever since we had the chant of it's not broken, which was an amazing moment on the uh, the nation bus, uh, I have, I've just, it's just kind of been in the back of my mind. But it absolutely is great to hear that he is skating and he's, and he's feeling good. I mean, it, I know it's just anecdotal friend of a friend's hamster kind of information but you trust tommy or not yet you trust tommy gazola and uh yeah it does uh it does get you excited a little bit gets you drinking the kool-aid a little faster rick you let's just get this fucking season going i agree agree. let's talk about jesse pulley some more i do have jesse pulley on the list he scored again today i don't well yesterday are you guys done fucking trolling me for this podcast like well hold on oh no no i'm not actually because remember when like Two you episodes. want some Oga Pogo talk? Yes, please. Okay. For the last I'll two find another mead recipe too. Go for ahead. The last two episodes when we do copy ad read, you uh, you usually have a, a a sound effect that leads us out of it. You're listening to <laughs> Oilers Nation Radio, a member of the Nation Network <laughs> of Podcasts. I can't help but notice, and I'm sure our listeners have as well, that that's been mystifyingly absent this episode so far because you have just been off in a tiff. The reason I want to bring up uh, Jesse Pulley though, Tyler. <laughs> This is not. We are back. This is not to annoy you. This is not to annoy you. But yeah. what I want to what I want to talk about is the other day Jim Matheson kind of posted and to paraphrase he's like, "Can we stop talking about Jesse Pulley Arvey ripping it up in Finland? I don't care." Kind of thing. Your Matheson voice. He's like a normal dude. No, no, that's huge, what he sounds like to me. Huge nation in my head. Um, is that fair <laughs> to say we shouldn't talk about Jesse when he goes out and scores a highlight reel goal? He still is an Oilers asset after all. He's still on the trade block. And you would think maybe that having him score a bunch of these goals in Finland is only going to help his trade value now. Has he already scored a bunch of goals? Well, I mean, in this Champions League thing, he's Dude. got a couple. Has Dude. his trade value risen? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not taking I, calls. You can talk about it. if you like. I'm not going to sit here and be like, everyone should shut the fuck up. Because you're right. He's Oilers property. <laughs> He's Oilers' property. What, how, what he does over there could, in some way, I suppose, affect his trade value. I just don't care about it, so I don't talk about it. Whatever happened to once an Oilers, always an Oilers? What you know? Where where did that die off? I look forward to talking about Jesse Pugliarvi every single week, just to annoy Tyler until he's moved. It's it was a move. It was a fan- I'm going to go to Finland because there'll be less <laughs> Jesse talk there. It was a fantastic moment on the uh, Inside the Nation yesterday when Dustin made it to like minute. 15 or 16 before talking about Jesse, which is the first time ever I've done an episode for him where he hasn't talked about. We Jesse. had him on real life on Monday as well. Dusty Nielsen. That is go check that out. Cause it was a great interview. We talked about his climb up into the radio industry. He worked Super at a grocery good. store. Oh, but he loved produce and he Loves slept produce. with his sister's friend who is also their roommate. He also found squatters in an apartment in Fort McMurray. Uh, there's a whole lot going on there. Go check out that interview <laughs> on the nation real life. But it was funny because we were probably almost an hour through the podcast. We hadn't mentioned Jesse at all. And I'm like, I can't let you out of here without talking about it. He's like, ah, how could I not? He That's actually it. pretty close to how he sounds. Our impressions are just on point today. Basically, you if you, a very good job. Thank you, man. If you need more impressions from me or Tyler, just hit us up in the DMS at O N radio podcast on Twitter and Instagram. You're not even going to charge for them. Nope. Wow. You nope. guys should get on Fiverr. I should be on Fiverr. I should also be on that. Uh, what's Cameo? It Cameo. Yeah, that's where we Cameo. got that, that long neck kid. Yeah, that dead thing. long, long neck. neck. Yeah. And there is a lot of people on Cameo now. If it's you've great. gone on there recently. Zach Boychuk's on Cameo. The, the price <laughs> ranges vary greatly. I would pay a Cameo for Zach Boychuk just to watch him follow and then unfollow and then refollow me on Twitter. That'd huh? be nice. That'd be real nice. I mean, he's more famous from doing that than he was for playing hockey, isn't he? Bye-o! Put well, that... <laughs> that's the truth about that's the truth about like ninety percent of X players nowadays. Yeah. Tyler brought up a question before we started recording, and I want to pose it to you, gentlemen, on who is going to make a bigger impact for the Edmonton Oilers this year. Mike Smith or James Neal? Mike Smith or James Neal? Around the horn, Rick. I'm gonna start with you. Who do you think? Mike Smith, James Neal. Go ahead. Rick is thinking. I think it has to be, I think if you had to choose one, it has to be Mike Smith. I think we need a lot more help in keeping the puck out of the net. I still maintain the fact that I think that he's going to take over the job. I think they're going to be real close to 50-50. I can see that. I agree there. I think Bubbles is the one that, uh, or Mr. Smithers, however you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, we need to get to that too. But I think uh, he is he is the guy that needs to either A, push Miko Koskinen to be better, 
or B, take over the job himself. And that's and goaltending, as we've seen since the last time the Oilers were in the Stanley Cup playoffs, goaltending is super The important. better Smith is, the more it'll allow Koskinen to work on his game. Like, I know we <laughs> sat there and said last year he couldn't catch a puck. But after uh, listening to Gregor's show on Mondays, I think he has that goalie guy in on Mondays. Uh, Kevin Woodley. Yeah, yeah, and he says... Uh, in goal magazine. It's well before the shot where he's fallen behind in the play, so... I'll leave that to an actual goalie guy, and uh, I'll believe what? him. And it says if he's if he's behind, you know, three seconds before the shot, by the time he gets around to squaring up, Fuck. he's already behind. That's way worse than I thought it was. Like gold glove, you can work <laughs> on that speed. Actually, no, it's behind just, it's, no, it's positioning. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. whatever's throwing cool. him off, and he didn't it's get terrifying. any chance last year to work on him because he was the only goddamn goaltender. Like it well, was, well, we had Stolars, but we didn't want to use them. So. And they didn't really want to play. T- yeah, I really don't get it. It is what it is. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we are where we are right now. So it's going to allow him to work on, on things as he goes through the year. And I think I expect both of them to have a, a, a much better year. I'm also going to say Mike Smith is going to have a bigger impact on the Edmonton Oilers because not only is he going to take over the starting job, he is the Oilers, arguably their best puck moving defenseman. Your thoughts, Tyler? Good point. Um, I was told by a friend of the podcast, Andrew Peard, who's also the play-by-play voice of the Oil Kings. He listens all the time, so I'm giving him a shout-out. Okay. Shout he out to told you, me I need to be all in on Koskinen after hearing me defend him against Dusty on Real Life. Um, so I'm all in on Koskinen. I think Koskinen's going to be the starter. I think he's going to play like 50-55 games. He's going to be a legitimate number one goaltending option. And I think Mike Smith's role will be a little diminished because of that. He'll still make an impact, but when James Neal scores 23 at the end of this year, we're going to be going, yep, the scoring from James Neal was more valuable than the backup job from Mike Smith. I like that. Dan, you've been pointing around that pen. What do you guys say? I just think that uh, when you say that Costin is going to be good, are you saying that Neal is, or uh, Smith is pushing him? or Yeah, maybe, but I don't think that... I don't think Miko Koskinen saw on his phone Oilers sign Mike Smith and went, fuck, I better now start I working better. on my glove hand. Yeah. Like, I think he knew that already. And I had this argument with Dusty on Real Life where Dusty was just kind of like, Koskinen's not good enough, right? Like, it. Dusty said it took one year for everyone in the NHL to figure out his weaknesses. And my take was it took one year for him to realize what his weaknesses were and he could improve on them. But do goalies so often improve in their early 30s? Man, maybe Tim Thomas improved. <laughs> That's re- true. I think that, that they can true. reinvent themselves. Yeah, I, I I think there's opportunity for growth here with Miko Koskinen. Like he's gonna hang a live laugh love poster up in his house, and he just like really get in touch with himself. He wakes up every morning and says, "Back to the grind." He has Absolutely. that motivational poster of the kitten on the hang branch. in there, kitty. Hang in there. Catch that puck, kitty. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. The kitty's only holding up it's on its right arm. So everybody kind of thinks Smith, except. Tyler, he's going to the real deal, James I'm, Neal. I'm Woo. kind of surprised by that. I thought I thought I was going to be like a detractor opinion, but but fair enough. No, That's I still think Smith's going to take over the job. And I also <laughs> have said that he's going to score uh, 10 assists. 10 assists from Mike Smith is going to be sweet. Any goals? Uh, no, no goals. How many shots on net? Over or under 10? For him? <laughs> mm. Over, okay, if I decide an actual over under, how many shots on goal for Mike Smith? One and a half. Over. You think he'll shoot the puck on net more than one time this season? <laughs> I think, yeah, I do. I think he is going to be the guy by goal. accident. Yeah, he's going to wander out on the PK and fucking rip it down. As roll well. some, roll <laughs> no, I'm going to go. I'm um, going to go with over too. So there's going to be a couple of times he's going to be sending uh, Connor out for flyers, and he's going to miss him. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's going to hit Man. the net. Yeah. How good in three on three overtime is that pass going to be though? Like you almost want to put him out there just to have that fourth guy. Out. It's kind of like Mike Morrison, Morrison with a player yeah. stick. Mike, we're going to do yes. the whole Mike Morrison thing again. Yes. Oh, three if we can monster. learn to do a knuckle puck, then we're really in business. <laughs> Imagine if it... Like, I don't know if Tyler got that uh, reference. He looked at you pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Russ Tyler, right? You did stare at him right. for a few okay. seconds. Uh, All right, we're on the same page doing. here. We're moving. Um, okay. But I would wonder, let's get like really innovative with the shit. Mike Smith, for over for three-on-three three overtime only, comes out wearing like an adjusted blocker and glove and like a different <laughs> stick just so he can handle the puck better. And they have him like actually working it. Two blockers. You're going two blockers. And when he, when he comes down, you drop, yeah. you drop your, well, yes, you can still hold it, but yeah, you you're really going, don't need to catch it at this point. Right. You're going you're Joe Madden flopping style it, you're just here. Flopping it down. This Joe, Joe Madden. Madden with the reliever yeah, in the man. first inning kind of stuff. Like reliever this. in the first inning, putting pitchers at Look, third sometimes base. Sometimes you're in a yeah. position where you need to find ways to win. Fair enough. Although, granted, with how good the Oilers are in three-on-three overtime with McDavid and Drysaddle, maybe they just shouldn't do anything that crazy. But, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, Mike Smith back there for three-on-three. Mm-hmm. Connor and Leon are clutch. We know this. 
I feel like 10 assists for him is realistic. Yeah. It honestly might be because they might score five, six overtime winners this year. I he gets in all. literally see him getting five, six assists. So. In that scenario, all ha- that has to happen is as soon as Mike Smith gets the puck, the guys flee the zone. And he lobs. And Smith's on his own to lob it. Yeah, that works until the lob is like two feet short. No, the no, other no, team no, picks it off as a three on him. Nobody has the pick off like Connor. That, that was that was the most amazing one against the Bruins in overtime. Mike Smith's career high in assist is three. He's done it twice. Well, we'll pound the last year in Calgary one. and in 2013-14 in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, yeah, who's who's scoring goals in Phoenix? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what's why his like, assists per sixty? Tobias oh, Reader, very high. He's also got an excellent Corsi and Fenwick and <laughs> PDF. Um, you question. need to let me know when we're done our checklist because I have a Coombs hypothetical this week. Oh, well, it's on the list, buddy. It is Good. on the list. But first, I need to talk about our friends at SkipTheDishes.ca. Why? Because I'm getting hungry and I haven't eaten. It is 2.40 in the afternoon as we're recording this, and I'm starving. So I think maybe after we 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 wrap this up, I'm going to head on over to Skip the Dishes. I'm going to order me something delicious. Maybe. Like what? Well, I'm kind of thinking of what you do when you do a tour of the city. Oh, funny. Like grab an item from different places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might just go at who's got low delivery fee or no delivery fee, and I might just do something Reward special for myself. I like it. I did pierogies yesterday from the brew house on Skip. It was great. You just pierogies? Hold? That's a power just move. Just pierogies, yeah. They nice. hold okay? Yeah, they held good. I guess they, they get so scorching hot inside, man. You could probably walk them yeah. through a fucking, through a dead cold winter and they'll still, be, they'll still be hot. Absolutely. Basically what we're saying is go to skipdish.ca, get yourself something to eat. There it is. Follow Oilers Nation on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just fucking do it, please. Tom Gazzola says to do it. If Tom Gazzola says to do it, I command you to. I command you to. My last question before we get to Coombs hypothetical is, is the Oilers bottom six good enough? Last year, the Edmonton Oilers set an NHL record from the worst production from scores six to 12 in their lineup. It was the worst goals total in 44 years in the NHL. Combined six to 12, those scores, those forwards produced only 43 goals. Is this year's bottom six better? Did Ken Holland improve what we had last year? Yes. Sorry, I just jumped the gun here because I want to get my answer out there. He did. Um, There's a handful of more players that have offensive upside when you compare it to last year. I think Jujar is a guy as well who's basically going to work like an addition considering how rough last year was for him when he was on the ice and when he was hurt as well. Um, If Gagne can do what he did for 20 games here for a full season, that's going to provide value. Marcus Granlin's going to provide value. I like the addition of Shahan. I just think there's enough positives going on there. Joachim Nygaard's a wild card. You got guys like Ryan McLeod, Tyler Benson, if he's in the top six, bottom six, whatever. There's enough wild cards here, along with enough guys who you can look at and go, they have a history of scoring 10 to 15 goals. I, I think there's tons of reasons to be optimistic about this bottom six. Daniel? Coom and I are all in on this bottom six. This is exactly what we asked for. Weren't you just humming and hawing over the Sheehan signing, though? No, I just said that there's like... That there's a there's an element there where you, you add the question mark because he's going to be having a lot of defensive zone starts, zone starts, and that's where we're saying he's not as good. So yes, there is there's definitely with every scratch ticket there's a there's a there's a pro and con list that that goes on because they're scratch tickets. That's what they do. So scratch I still ticket would, count. I still would rather have traded two or three for like a three million dollar guy. However, even with this roster. I still think we're 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 in a better spot than we were last year. I just think you have so many options and so many utility knife guys that you can just slide up and slide down that we hoped we had with like a Tobias Reader last year, but we didn't have six Tobias Readers. I like uh, quality over quantity, and I think we have the quality and the quantity. I just don't think we have like so you we think don't have we hit a thousand percent on all the signings. No, nope. they're all going to score twenty. No, nope. and I and it's fine if only two or three of them do. But that's I'd that's love better than three of those guys. That's better than 20. our that's better than our bottom six last year. To to bag milk's point there, that was historically one of the worst bottom six of all time. Because you made them bring in Toby Reader. Because mm, I made them bring in. Yes, you're right. Yeah, you did it. You're Dan welcome. was lobbying for Toby Reader. I was. He also wanted uh, he wanted uh, Leon in the minors. I think he did. Yeah, yep. he did. No, I was hacked. <laughs> I was hacked. <laughs> Oddly. My power rankings in the real estate game went up one this week. I don't know what happened. Then there's that dude that comes out and he's like, I'm going to climb a mountain for charity. Like, oh man, that guy just capitalized. Amazing. But again, a big problem that the Oilers have in terms of addressing their bottom six or their top six is that they have $4.8 million dead space this year. That is 6% of the cap, courtesy of our friends at puckpedia.com. 
The Sakara Bio 2.5. Pouliot still in the books for this season and next at 1.3. Milan Lushish at 750k and then eric graba for some reason was bought out last year still another 300 grand Man, it feels like graba was bought out like four years ago fuck yeah. me puli another year after this still yeah man oh my god it was a needless buyout that made no it was it was one of those, it was it was gonna be like a luchich contract where you know you're paying too much and not getting enough but yeah. he was even putting in a lot more than luch put in so he they could have played him they had the space on under the cap to play him another year even bury him if you want and then buy him out, and it would have stretched out over two years, and we'd be done by now. Or they they went for four. Boys, Peter Peter Shirley. Shirley. He was Peter just Shirley trying to see how gift. long he could leave his mark on the organization. He's Absolutely, the gift that keeps on giving. My favorite though is still Alexi Yashin. He was on the Islanders books for a hundred years. Bobby Bonilla is getting paychecks still. to like twenty thirty, and he gets his contracts from like ninety five. <laughs> and the best Brisco part was his contract like wasn't even that much. But they worked in an interest rate and then said he doesn't start getting paid to like whatever it was. Yeah, it's, it's hilarious ridiculous. to do research. That dude into hasn't that. played hasn't played in like fifteen years and he's still got another fifteen years worth of contracts. He um, he's making more than Pete Alonso, who just set the franchise record for home runs. Rick Di Pietro <laughs> is getting paid one point five million dollars until twenty twenty nine. That's let's, sweet. Let's he, he's that. working in radio now though, so he needs that extra cash, trust me. God Hold bless. On. Hold on. <laughs> You guys so if rich. anyone's got an extra 1.9 around your checks looking for a contract. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what? Tyler would be great in the room. And Just don't encourage him to work hard or grind. I need minimal motivation. <laughs> I think that... <laughs> and I like just, I hate motivation, so it's both like an <laughs> asset and at my detriment. Uh, when we mentioned Yashin and we mentioned Rick DiPietro, I think that Garth Snow is like one... That one bad trade that he didn't get to do for Ryan Murray, where he wanted to trade every draft pick that the Islanders had that year for Ryan Murray. I think he's like one bad trade away from being in competition with Pete Shirelli. Well, his problem with that one was that Peter Shirelli didn't have that second yes, overall slot. Exactly. That was his problem with that one. Exactly. Otherwise, Pete would have been like, gladly, whatever um, you need. There was also like he really, really fucked up the Thomas Vanek thing when Vanek was... Uh, was an Islander. I'm trying to pull up the trades quickly on the spot, but like Garth Snow was tremendously shit Cause I remember, at his job for a long time because they signed him. They signed him. I just remember they were asking for the moon until like the last minute and yeah. then nobody was paying what they wanted. So they flipped him to Montreal, if I remember correctly, for just nothing. Okay, so sorry, they didn't sign him. They acquired him from Buffalo right, in right. exchange for Matt Molson, a first round pick and a second round pick. Oh, man. That That's was in October of the season. And then they were terrible, traded him at the deadline of that same season with a fifth round pick for a second round pick. <laughs> they gave cool. up Matt Molson and a first, <laughs> and all they got back was a second. Uh, that's good. I Is like he that. the one who signed the defenseman, though? That might be a saving grace for him. Did he sign Letty and uh, Boychuk? He traded he, for Boychuk and Letty, and Letty on the same from, day. Like on the cap, like they had, he took Bruins, the Bruins and the. Uh, he signed them, Bruins. Didn't he sign them in like. <laughs> He nope. acquired Boychuk in a trade him. for like bits and pieces, but then At he the signed Boychuk to yeah. a mammoth deal. At the end of Pete Shirelli's tenure in Boston, when he had him up against the cap ceiling. Fuck, yeah. man, why couldn't Pete Shirelli get a new job? Soon. Next year. I hope Always so. next year. And that's when really we have cap space. So. That'd be sweet. Come on, Ken. Just be patient, man. Pete will get a new job. No, if you're, if you're fearful about uh, old Oilers coming back and roasting us on the ice, you don't want to go anywhere near that guy then. Pete? Yeah. yeah, Pete will finally start winning trades. He'll hold, he'll, and he'll like Marcus <laughs> Naslin Stoyanov us or something stupid. Like, mm. like it'll be really, really bad. So Could let's be. just keep away from it. Put him out on an island somewhere and see you later, bud. Sorry for the people that don't understand Marcus Naslin and Stoyanov us. Oh, yeah, that's what his name was. What is it? What does that mean? I, did, I don't know what he that's Oh, that was a trade. What? Pittsburgh what? flipped him to Vancouver, right? Yeah. Vancouver got Naslin for like nothing. How did I not like that this? glass in front of you right now might be worth more than uh Oh, well, there's a sea change brewery glass. Um we got like six minutes left. Are we doing Coombs hypothetical? Let's, Let's hit it. Wow. Okay. Your Remchuk really wants to do this with the sound. We effect. went long on real life and you drove Tyler crazy. Yes. <laughs> yes. It always does. We are back. All Let's right, go. We are back with a Coombs hypothetical. Here it is, guys. Nicholas, you're gonna want to listen up. Not that you have a microphone. Not well, that you have a microphone. Yeah, you can't chime in anyway. You have the ability to guarantee an Oilers win every single game this regular season. 82 and 0. You can make them go 82 and 0. I don't even need to hear the other part. I'm 96. Do we get the cup? Is that in the playoffs as well? Just regular season games. Okay. So you get them to the playoffs. Okay. But in order to get the win on that day, you need to skydive from 20,000 feet. Yep. 
I've, do you do it 82 times or do you spread so. it out? No doubt even, I do. I don't even care if I I've die. I've gone skydiving. It's amazing. I, I'm terrified of heights and I would do that. Uh, me too. I don't. I'm not terrified of heights. I'm terrified of the idea of jumping out of a plane and I'm some terrified parachute. of falling. Yeah. I've worn shorts for 400 out of 500 days. Okay. So would you, but would you, okay. I've run. Cam wanted to know how many times kilometers. would you do it and what's the thought process behind the games you would or wouldn't do? Here, I'll start what you guys are thinking because I'm a definite yes. I've gone skydiving before. It is dope. If I'm strapped to a dude and he's just like, he's doing all the work and pulling the thing or whatever, and I just got to be like, wee, I'm in. And, 82 enjoy, and the 80, enjoy the 82 and 0 season, my friends. Look, yeah. once you get one I'm, and two done, I'm pretty sure three through 82 are the exact same fucking thing. So I'm in. I just as long eat. as I can get number one and two done, I'm going 82 and 0. Absolutely. I would and I it. fucking hate that idea. I would do it without the guy on my back for that. Yeah, like the I, army like one I, where it's just attached to the I fucking plane or whatever, right? Be, like I'd be... Yeah, but shitless. coming in hot on the landing. I'd miss it. I'm no. sure I would die. Yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna to take the guy strapped oh, on the yeah, back, and he's going to land, about, and I'm just going to ride down with my feet up, and I'm just going to be like, all right, land us, homie, and he's going to be like, okay, we're done. I'm like, I okay, sweet, there's win the one. Part. I just thought of like the fucking ripping. Oh, I just yeah. remember yeah. when we I went skydiving, and we came in hot on the bottom. I'm like, we're going to crash, and he just like did this thing where he pulls up instantly, and you just kind of float down, and it was great. So you know what? You're welcome. You're welcome for an 82 and 0 season, courtesy of That's your not, friend Bag Milk. That wasn't hard enough. I wouldn't start doing it until after Christmas. Why is it too cold? No, no. I don't want to go skydiving if, <laughs> diving if I don't have to. Oh, you like just want after, presents? No, no he's the one. He's waiting there. He's like, okay, uh, February 13th. I'd be like, all right, 13 we gotta, points. We gotta go 100 the west of the way in. <laughs> Fine, I'll start now. Like I would only be doing it. If I really got to do it to get them in, if I can avoid it and they can slide into the eight seed, fuck, just <laughs> let them do it. And I'm not you'd skydiving. You'd be in the Hockey Hall of Fame though. Why? Because you were the reason that a team went 80. No one out. knows. Oh, is that was that a part of the the bet? I'm adding it in. Okay, <laughs> I'm altering Coombs hypothetical. That's fine. I like still it. don't care. Okay, I'm still stoked to do it. I'm but, just gonna say, enjoy your 82 and 0 yeah. season. Do I know friends. it's happening each time? Am I uh, jumping with you're the, jumping and you know they're gonna win? Oh, you're fucking right. So I'm doing it because then I'm gonna do exactly what you love to do too. I'm gonna fucking gamble. Absolutely, Nick Lau's good. What do you say? So I get to be on the mic again. Hey. Okay. Does that mean um, Nail scored twenty goals? <laughs> yes. <laughs> over already. Um, I've never been skydiving. I've thought about it. This is a good reason to go, I suppose. But I was actually before you brought that up, Tyler. I was gonna ask: Do you get the glory for it, or does it go unknown? Is this like a, a total, he total... He nothing in the, nothing in the news, nothing in the newspapers. He threw a little caveat in no, there. No, no, no. I'm asking you, on. would you do it without the glory? Absolutely. Of course I would. 100 course I would. Rock and roll. I want Dude, I have... Fly. Yeah, the glory's not at 3.30 when I land. The, gr- the glory is at 10 o'clock when we fucking win. And then you're sitting at, you know, at the pint having a delicious beer and everyone is relishing in all the victories for the Oilers and you're sitting there with a little smile on your face. Yeah. I'm going to fucking, I'm going to, I'm going to put, I'm going to put all the credit on my shoes again. Like I did back in the fucking playoffs. Cause there's going to be a fresh round of tea times coming my way. Bro, I got, I got, excited. Two, I got two new pairs of shoes for this. Season. I saw them. They I'm ready great. to roll. hundred percent. I love it. So sorry, Cam, that was a weak one, buddy. Ireland is making you soft, bro. All that Guinness. Yeah. Like I would have maybe like pause for thought if you had to have like, all your toenails ripped off every time. Ooh, yeah. If there was like pain involved, like it has to be something where it's like an actual like. I was thinking there'd be days where like sacrifice. you're so busy that you're like, fuck, I don't have time to go skydiving. I'd, I would just How long like take. I'd lose a just up and down. I'd lose a. Okay, I'd lose well, my I job. Guess. I think the I longest part of it will be going Why driving not? to the place and then getting strapped in and then going up. Yeah, the majority of these guys work on like a fucking computers. They can work anywhere. I guess. Yeah, man. Okay. Internet's open anywhere. You work on the edge of the city. I'm sure there's somewhere close to you. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, if, we, if it's going to give an 82 and 0 season, I'm in. Sure, would Ford have a plane for us? Oh, absolutely. Sure, would Ford, we're going to need a nation plane. Well, your gambling money. Yeah, you'd buy your own, I guess. My God. Could you imagine just start like oh, 100 bucks on game gambling? one and just double down, double down, double down, double down? Put all your life savings on them to win the president's trophy. Well, See, yeah, if, that's what you do, right? You put it all on the first game, and then yeah, you just keep rolling over. You'd be fucking. Roll all, buddy. Oh. There was a time I remember when the Blue Jackets went on that sixteen game heater. Mm-hmm. If you would have put a hundred bucks on them on yeah, game it was one, stupid, wasn't it? And rolled it, it was in, well it was into the millions. One point eight million. Oh. Uh, if you would have started with a hundred and then pulled out at the exact moment. Yeah, and that's the that's the problem. Yeah, there, and lies the problem. Um. Anyways, cool. Gambling. Well, 
I want to go ahead and thank our friends at Sherwood Ford the Giant and, of course, SkipTheDishes.ca for making all of this possible. Thank you to all of you for listening to Oilers Nation Radio. If you have any comments or questions, hit us up on Twitter and Instagram at ON Radio Podcast. Tyler, push the button. Shout out, Damien. Best wishes. Thanks for listening to Oilers Nation Radio, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. Make sure to follow us on all of our social media to stay up to date and never miss a podcast. Yeah, I never want.